classroom can get your students ready for the technology age. But have you ever wondered how you could better support your tier two students with Google Classroom? Well, no worries. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set your Google Classroom up so that you can provide math intervention support for your tier two students. my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Williams aka The Ignited Teacher and on this channel I help math teachers of struggling learners to effectively manage their classrooms and to increase student achievement. Google Classroom can be a powerful tool for students that struggle with mathematics. It builds their self-confidence and takes away the self-reliance on you as the keeper of knowledge. Whether you're sitting in front of them or you're teaching them remotely, the way that you set up your Google Classroom can make all the difference. So let's go ahead and dive right in. When you're setting up your Google Classroom, you have to take into account how you structure your classroom and how where you put things. So it's the same thought process as if you were setting up your classroom at school. So when I set up my Google Classroom, it's a certain flow that I want to have. So you know in Google Classroom, you have the stream. Now the stream can be very, very messy for students because it's like mumble jumble. And a lot of kids that struggle have a hard time compartmentalizing thoughts and stuff. So what I do is I tell my students to go to classwork. And classwork has a more linear structure to it and things are not out of place and the kids don't have to shift and try to hide, look for things. And that's part of the anxiety that a lot of children have. So all of my classrooms are set up the same, no matter what I'm teaching. So we start with the expectations, which we start with expectations when we're in school as well. So that's nothing new. My Google Classroom expectations are just a Google Doc. With the expectations clear. Nothing fancy or anything. I'll just put a picture of Google Classroom right there. So the next thing in my classwork stream is the daily agenda. The daily agenda is really what governs or sets the tone for my classroom. So the daily agenda is what really supports your students because a lot of students that are in math intervention have a hard time with structure and organization. A lot of my kids had ADD or ADHD or they were on some type of medication. So I realized that this is important. And not only do math students a lot of times struggle with math, they struggle with reading as well. So notice within my daily agenda, I have snipped a picture of where the assignment can be found. So I also embedded a link. So it's a, a support for the kids to help them with organization. And if they struggle with reading, they have a picture of it and know where to go. So they can look for that in this cl under classwork. So moving on, then we have class discussion. Your class discussion is, even though we are online, even though we're online, the kids still have to have an opportunity to talk about the math. They have to be able to talk about it. And that's where this goes. A lot of my Flipgrid stuff goes here. I've used Padlet. It also goes there as well. Now, this is the snippet of where the classroom assignment can be found. And you probably said, well, if you put the link or whatnot, 
why do you have this because what i do is i make the students go back and turn in their assignment so it can alert me that it's complete so they have to know where to go and that's part of their responsibility it teaches them um, independence as well to go back and click hit turned in as you can see i had a low this was from when we were shut down for corona, the coronavirus only had three out of 16. So then I have a section for Flipgrid. I have a section for Nearpod, Edpuzzle. Now this section here at the bottom, Math Skill Builder vid Videos, it is actually here to support children with um, support with things that you know that are going to struggle with. Like my students struggle with um, finding the equation of a line. So what I did is found a video on YouTube and they worked on that. So if they forgot how to do something, it was already there for them. Um, order of operations, that is forever an issue. I. I'm pretty sure it was an issue when they first learned it in fifth or sixth grade, but it they forget order operations. They forget the divide and exponent rule. This is for high school and introduction of slope. My students constantly forget how to find the slope of a line. So mashup math, I really like the way that they introduce slope and I put that video on there just in case. So, what it does is it takes the focus from you reminding and prompting the students to them having a reference on the, of their own. I have reference tools. My students, you know, some of them use calculators, but I put a multiplication chart in here. It was more so for fractions and finding equivalent fractions for them. And then we have the Algebra 1 star reference chart. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Texas, we take the star test and then I have some math games. So like if they, the math games were just practice for them, like for coordinate grids, you would think that by the time my, they got to ninth grade, they would know this, but they struggle with coordinate plane and just really understanding the quadrants and how it helps to know the quadrants when you're trying to find um, the X and Y intercepts on a line. So uh, that I put some math games in there. So all of these things are there to support students that struggle. What you want to do is make it as simple as possible for your students to find things and feel like they're supported in your classroom. And one of the things I noticed with my students, they went from depending on me to creating a cohesive environment where they supported each other. It was like their little um, ecosystem where everybody depended on each other, but, and then they became dependent. They didn't need me as much. Um, I could really facilitate instead of being the one who was seen as the keeper of knowledge, but it was a really good experience. And I love Google Classroom because it helped me to help my students. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. It can be difficult, but not impossible to support your math intervention students remotely. With the right structure, the right resources available to those students, you can move your students from relying on you for information to being independent. If you want to learn more about providing support for your tier two students, click the link in the description box and the Math Intervention Academy has a wait list for you to learn more about how you can support your math intervention students. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notifications for when I upload future videos.